open and attentive to hear this what's just to so move my spirit Amen. and has in a sense quake my bones and shook my spirit in a sense Amen. that I just want the Lord to come and uh, depart this revelation to you I can't do it Amen. and I can only put it out and let God come yes. and vindicate it it's his Amen. word it's his Bible Yes. Amen and it's he interprets it himself and so I pray if you got your Bible Let's turn the scripture in the book of the Song of Solomon. And I want to look there. And I want to start. And I want to read a couple of verses and I'll, I'll let you be seated and we'll pray. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. It says, Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Because of thy Savior... Of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Draw me that we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray tonight. God, that you'll come and tabernacle within your word. God, speak from it. And Lord, we just pray, God, you'll make this thing alive. God, that it will so open our hearts and totally illuminate our souls and our spirits that we'll love you more. And when we walk out of here, God, there'll be a greater change in our life that you're our absolute, you're our Lord, our King, our God. We pray that God, tonight, you'll come yes. and not this holy word that you've given that holy men has written down through the ages, but now this is the day when all the Scripture, God, has come into total manifestation. The Scripture is coming to harvest. Yes. It's ripe. It's mature, God. And we thank you for opening the seals and leaving us not blind and ignorant. And we thank you, Lord, for choosing us as a bride of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. And we pray that you anoint this word tonight. Make it real in our hearts. And cast the vision before our eyes that we can see this great glorious thing. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can all be seated. I just want to... Uh, Start off with here in verse 1, and you know, I never really seen the Song of Solomon like this until I really, uh, I was up there with Brother Luke in Arkansas, and he began to expound some things that God revealed to him about it, and he, it, he just got me into this thing, so I began to study and began to look into it, and we know that, you know, the Song of Solomon is the relationship between Christ and His bride, Amen. and the love affair that He has. Now, if you notice with verse 1, it said the song of songs, which is Solomon's. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, if you look in the Bible, it says that, you know, that says he's king of kings and lord of lords. And it begins to expound. And you know, also in the Bible, it talks about the tabernacle in the wilderness. It said the, there's a holy place and the holiest of holies. Yeah. So it's declaring that he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And that he is, and there is a holiest of holies. So this is saying that this is the song of songs. Uh -huh. This is the song. This is the picture that's taking place between Christ and his bride. Yeah. This is what's happening. So this is, of all songs, this is the song. This is the picture. This is the vision. This is, it. This is what's taking place between Christ and the bride. Amen. Now, if you notice down in verse 2, it said, Let him kiss me. With the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Now, see, here she's asking, she's saying, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. And we know here that she is desiring an intimate relationship with her king, with her Lord. So she's asking him, would you come and would you kiss me with the kisses of your mouth? For I desire thee, there's a love affair that she's desiring, an intense longing desire for a love affair between this man and her. She's wanting something, and then she goes on to say, For thy love is better than wine. Now that word love in the Hebrew means, if you look it up, it means a token love. That word love means it is a token love. It, it's more than just a love. But it's, it's a token love. And I believe that in this hour, God, as the prophet has declared to us, that the token has come upon the sea. And that token has given us an assurance that He loves us. Amen. 
And the love that He's given us is more than just a Pentecostal Methodist love, but it is a pure, holy, eternal love that He loves His bride. That He has given us a token in this hour that He loves us so much that He's given us something that we can hold upon and something that will give us assurance that He loves us. So she's saying, thy love is better than wine. You've given us a token. You've died for us. You've given us that great life that was in your spirit that's now in our body. Now go on down to verse 3. It says, because of thy Savior, thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured forth. So she's saying now here, your name is as a sweet ointment poured forth. Now we know that everything that was in God was poured into Christ. Amen. So every essence of God's being and the ointments of God's Spirit, the spices, amen, of God's Spirit was poured into Jesus Christ and His life, amen, brought forth a sweet Savior in the nostrils of God. So she's saying, oh, how thy name is as an ointment poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. And she goes on down to verse 4 and she says, draw me, we will run after thee. The King hath brought me into his chamber. So she's saying, Draw me. We will run after thee. Let me ask you a question tonight. Doesn't the Bible say that no man can come to the Father except the first the Father draw him? Yes. That we know that we cannot come in the presence of Jesus Christ unless he draws us. And you know there is nothing that we've done that, God, that made us that God so overshadowed us with his grace. There's nothing that we did. It's not that we fasted. It's not that we prayed it up. But it was God's divine grace and his love that, he's just, that he has bestowed to his bride this hour. He come to Adam and he said, if you will, I will, Adam. If you don't sin, then you'll be all right. If you do sin, then you've got to get out. But he come to Abraham and said, Abraham, you're already blessed. I've already blessed you. I've already made you the father of nations. You're all, there's nothing you can do, Abraham. He didn't smile just right. He didn't pray just right. He wasn't good looking enough. But there was something about it that God's grace had overshadowed and gave Abraham grace that was beyond what it, the covenant that he gave with Adam. It was, a, it was a different covenant. It was a grace covenant. It wasn't a law. He said, I've already given it to you. I've already blessed you, Abraham, if you just believe me. I've already given it to you. So now she's saying, draw me. Now she knows as her being the bride. She cannot come into the presence of the king until he draws her. For it is the man that gives the marriage proposal and not the woman. Isn't that right? Yes. So she knows that she cannot come in the presence of Jesus Christ or in, in, or in the presence of this lover until he draws her. He's saying, would you draw me? Because nobody can come. No, there was nothing that we did. We walked through the course of this world. And the fashions of the day and the trends of society. But yet there was about it. The, one, the thing I like about it is there was grace that come. Amen. Amen. To draw me in the presence of Jesus Christ. So let me recognize. I am a believer. And I am his bride. It goes on to say, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. Amen. So she's saying, now the king has answered me. He's done it. You notice she said, we will run after thee. There's many churches that have run out after him but she says draw me and he does Amen. the king has brought me into his chambers so he answers her and he brings her into the chambers because now he brings her into his presence and said we will be glad and rejoice in thee we will remember thy love more than one the upright love thee so now he's brought her into the chambers she's now in the presence of the king and notice he says, I am black, but comely, O you daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar and the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me, because I am black. Now she's noticed, now she's in the presence of the king. She recognizes she's black. Amen. And when we come in the presence of Jesus Christ, and we bow ourselves as a bulrush down before the presence of God, we realize, we realize our sins and our lives that we had committed. We realized when we got in the presence of the king that we had sinned, a great sin, and we'd gone away from God. But yet he brought us into his presence. And whenever you get in the presence of Jesus Christ, let me tell you, there's a humble experience about it. There's nothing like it in this world. And you can confess your sins to Jesus Christ. Amen. And come humbly before God as God told Moses, Moses, this is a holy ground. You'll not keep your shoes, but we must come to God whole as 